Alex Winter just came out with a documentary called Downloaded, which rehashes the Napster sure. saga. Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from one of our producers, Ricky Camilleri, saying, uh, does Lars regret the way in which he handled Napster back in the day? It said the music industry has lost billions not harnessing the power of tech between, during, and after Napster. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm not a, a guy who sort of carries regret around with me on my shoulders a lot. Um, I'd say the only regret uh, about that 13 years ago was that we were not quite prepared. I think you, you used the word shit before, so I'll say um, we weren't quite prepared for the shit storm mm. that sort of, uh, that we became engulfed in. Um, you know, it started out as a street fight. It was basically, you know, there was a, a song that we were working on for the Mission Impossible 2 movie called I Disappear that all mm -hmm. of a sudden showed up on radio stations across the country, but it wasn't even mixed, it wasn't even finalized. I think so, I actually downloaded that one yeah. when I was in college. Well, there you go. I was very excited about it. <laughs> there you go. And you know what? I bought, I bought the album when it came out. There you go. Um, but so it sort of showed up on all these radio stations across the country and we were like, well, how did that happen? And I got a call from our office like the next day traces back to something called Napster and mm -hmm. we were like well if they're fuck with us we'll fuck with them mm -hmm. and um, then it sort of turned into a, it started off a street fight and then like a month later it was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> okay look at this <laughs> and then we were sort of like a little bit like uh, deer caught in headlights and um, and then obviously we, we stood our ground and, and fought the fight but obviously it was I mean it was a difficult time I mean yeah. it's not um, it's not easy um, being finger whacked at that level, and especially you know because you know the Napster people were really smart, in that they they made the whole fight about you know about money, mm -hmm. and about you know Metallica sort of like technologically inept, and they don't want to you know give stuff away for free. And we we're like, well, hang on, it's not about money; it's about control. But what, <laughs> whose what you... choice? Whose choice should it be? We were saying it should be our choice. If we want to give our stuff away. We'll give our stuff away. I mean, that's, that's a no-brainer, but that should be our choice. Mm -hmm. That choice was taken away, so we're standing over there going, this is about choice, not about money, but they made the, the it's about money argument way louder, and they were very smart, but 13 years later, you know, it was what it was. I'm proud of the fact that we stood up for what we believed in at that time, and I think that uh, history has sort of proved that we were... Um, somewhat right and um, you know the only thing that really bugged me about it was you know when they were calling us technically you know sort of Luddites or whatever I mean we were always consider ourselves to be part of, of the edge in terms of techno tech technology and we've always been very open about sort of investing everything that we had financially back into the band so when people called us greedy and money hungry and all of that that was a, a little bit out there then do you take at least some credit then for the iTunes regime we're living in now where there is you know licensed Pay to receive, or if free, if you choose so, uh, MP3s as opposed uh, to the free peer-to-peer -peer stuff. I, I don't take credit for anything. I still think that um, there were. Uh, it, it just feels like me being the poster child for that always felt a little odd. It seemed like somebody like uh, I don't know Sting or somebody should, you know, like <laughs> they're better at that stuff than me. I don't take any credit for anything. I'm like I said, I'm proud of of, of that we stood up for what we believed in. Metallica has always been. Um, we've been very impulsive. And I think people have sort of conveniently, they underestimate that side of us when we do things. They always look for these big reasons and all this, you know, it's like, we just jump. But with I mean, that impulsivity, do you think you took we're... a hit, like, popularity-wise? Do you think fans dropped off the bandwagon because of that? They've had well, to I mean, there are, obviously, there are obviously people that, um, there are obviously people that have, uh, you know, when they when they hear the word Metallica, just like we're sitting here talking 15 minutes in, the Napster thing yeah. comes up. So. I'd say in every fifth interview I do these days, there's a Napster three-minute conversation in there. I mean, it's uh, as you know, it's like it'll be part of my obituary. <laughs> you know, it's like it'll be in the first five sentences of my obituary, and I sort of <laughs> accept that for better or worse. I mean, in my life, it's a footnote, but um, in 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 some people's perception of who I am and what Metallica is, I understand that it's it's a big thing, and I accept that.